I've been asked to talk to you about the inner urban areas of northern Melbourne. And before we deal with those areas specifically, I'd just like to go back and discuss one or two things about what makes a good investment area and a good investment property. Now, as you would have heard us say on many occasions, there are three things we need from our investments. They are returns, security, flexibility. And we need the three. It's not just a matter of focusing on high returns, it's a matter of investing in property that has security and flexibility. And at the core of that, what we have determined many, many years ago, in fact three decades ago, is that our clients should purchase property in the best inner urban areas of a major metropolis from a demand, popularity and opportunity perspective. They must purchase properties in those areas that most people wishing to own and occupy property can afford. They must purchase property most appropriate for a long-term investment, namely to do with physical maintenance and tenancy management, and they must purchase property most appropriate to their particular circumstances, very often that's financial, tax or portfolio balance issues. Now, given those criteria, in summary, what that means is medium to high density residential property in the best inner urban areas of Melbourne, Sydney, and five years ago we determined that Brisbane had become a major metropolis in regard to its property market. What happens when we talk about the best inner urban areas and why we put the word opportunity in is because in fact best if we were talking about Sydney, for example, could be Kirribilli, it could be Paddington, it could be Double Bay or Elizabeth Bay. In Melbourne, it could be East Melbourne, Turak, Albert Park, the best parts of South Yarra. Now, what happens to those best areas over time is they become too, for want of a better word, they become too hot, too expensive, and it's very hard, it's very hard to see upside. So the word opportunity in our first uh, set of criteria with regard to what we recommend our clients purchase enables us where in fact as far as we're concerned there's no downside, no speculation, but the underlying demand of both tenancy and sale is at such a strength that we are confident that we will have appropriate levels of returns, security and flexibility. And therein lies why it is the inner northern urban areas of Melbourne, not alone, but most definitely why they fit that criteria. Now the development of Melbourne about 20 or 30 years ago, Melbourne was the fifth least dense city in the world. And the better inner urban areas, the popular inner urban areas, were fundamentally uh, south and eastern, and to the extent they were northern, it was parkful, Carlton and you know possibly Fitzroy North. Now since then what we've seen in Melbourne is we've seen you know Richmond become extremely popular and and we've seen the southeastern area um, Armidale, uh, Eastern Hawthorne, uh, Caulfield, North Caulfield, St Kilda, East St Kilda, those areas in more recent times Port Melbourne has become extremely popular and been very successful from an investment point of view. But to the north, when I mentioned Parkville and Carlton, we've always said to people, South Brunswick, now we say Brunswick. Uh, Fitzroy, Collingwood, Abbotsford, they are all areas that have had fantastic opportunity and all of that is bubbling to the surface and it can be easily seen. Recently, we recommended our clients purchase property in a development just near Ligon Street uh, near Brunswick Road a and I said to somebody, I said you can throw a stone from this development, hit Ligon Street, throw a stone north, throw a stone south and you will encompass 20 restaurants. And I explained to these people, I said restaurants don't make property. They don't make property a great investment. But to have 20 successful and buzzing restaurants says a heck of a lot about an area and about the underlying demand and its popularity and in fact to an extent 
its future growth. Now you add that buzz and that activity to how close we are to Melbourne itself, to the city of Melbourne. And whether we're speaking of Paris or London or New York or Tokyo, the inner urban areas for obvious reasons, access to employment, access to education, access to uh, uh, um, the better retail facilities, centralised transport, access to entertainment in regard to community entertainment, whether it's the MCG or the Art Centre or the Botanic Gardens or the Yarra itself or restaurants, all of that you add to this buzz that I'm talking about in this inner urban area in Brunswick, in Fitzroy, in North Fitzroy, in Carlton, in Collingwood, you add that access to the city and therein lies why we've seen in recent years, in the last decade or decade and a half, such an underlying uh, demand for both occupation and ownership of property in these inner northern areas of Melbourne. I, I, I say to you with extreme confidence, confidence that I would have had 30 years ago when recommending that our clients purchase those properties in Kirribilli I speak of, or purchase those properties in South Yarra that they did, and many of them, in fact hundreds of them, or in Albert Park, I say to you with the same confidence, these inner urban areas of Melbourne uh, are going to be great medium to long-term investments. I have no doubt, great confidence, and I, I endorse those areas to you very, very strongly.